Although this isn't something we see as much in this day and age, with the exception of 2016 Suicide Squad, the albums that accompanied movies used to be just as important as the movies themselves. Not all of these original motion picture soundtracks had a big impact, but in the 1990s, one series of movies had more influence over the music of the day than any other before. I'm Think So Joe, this is Things You Might Not Know, and today I'm going to talk about a movie soundtrack that had almost as much of a subcultural impact as Nirvana's Nevermind. Directed by Alex Proyas and starring Brandon Lee, the son of martial arts legend Bruce Lee, the cult superhero film The Crow was released on May 13, 1994. Based on the comic series of the same name created by James O'Barr, the story of The Crow follows fictional rock star and murder victim Eric Draven as he attempts to get bloody justice for not only his own murder, but also the sexual assault and murder of his fiancée. Helping out Eric along the way is the too-old-for-this-shit disgraced street cop Albrecht, played by Ernie Hudson, and the streetwise skateboarding post-grunge fashion icon Sarah, played by Rochelle Davis. While not considered to be successful by industry standards at release, The Crow would go on to be what's known as a sleeper hit, meaning that the majority of the success of the movie happened after its initial theatrical run. Lots has been said about why this is by many who are more qualified than me, but the two main reasons for the delayed achievements of the movie that most can agree on are the now infamous on-set death of the movie's star and the soundtrack. Before I get too deep in, do you know of a mostly unknown tidbit in entertainment history that you wish a channel like this one would finally cover so you feel less alone in your knowledge of obscure facts? Well, now's your time to shine! Drop that idea in the comments, and maybe it'll be featured in a future episode of Things You Might Not Know. For those of you currently unaware of the tragic circumstances that happened on set during the filming of The Crow, I'll give you a quick recap. During the filming of the flashback scene depicting the assault and murder of Eric Draven and his fiancée Shelley, a gun that was meant to be a prop was fired by actor Michael Massey, who played the villain henchman Funboy, with a live round striking Brandon Lee in the abdomen eventually killing him after being rushed to the hospital. Unbeknownst to anyone on set, including Massey, the gun used in the scene had a live round in the chamber that was meant for use in a different scene. I'm not going to get deep in on the details and who was at fault, as that's not what we're here for. If that's something you have more interest in, there has been a ton of commentary over the years regarding the who's, how's, and why's of this sad incident. For his part, Michael Massey took a year off from acting in order to deal with the trauma of having been the one to shoot Lee. All the way up until his own passing in 2016 from cancer, Massey had never watched The Crow, revealing in a 2005 interview that he continued to have nightmares about the incident, stating, I don't think you ever get over something like that. The soundtrack for The Crow easily had just as much of a cultural impact in 1994 as Brandon Lee's untimely death. The first song on the album that effectively worked as the movie's main theme was a song called Burn by goth rock mainstays The Cure. Of course, if you were to ask the members of The Cure now about this song, they would most likely not even remember that it exists, a fact they've been reported to admit to whenever fans request that they play it live. Another band that appeared on the soundtrack with their song Big Empty was Stone Temple Pilots, who had been receiving moderate attention up until that point, with their 1992 album Core peaking at number 3 on the Billboard charts. Their contribution to the Crow soundtrack is what many consider to be the thing that pushed STP into the alt-rock stratosphere, turning them into a 90s rock radio staple. Big Empty, which subsequently appeared on the band's sophomore album Purple, wasn't the song that Stone Temple Pilots pushed to be on the album, though. Their song Only Dying, which had been recorded in demo form when the band was still going by the name Mighty Joe Young, was the original choice. The decision to switch the song up was made after Brandon Lee's death, as Big Empty fit the tone of the film better. One of the other standout songs on the original soundtrack for The Crow was a cover of Joy Division's Dead Souls by Nine Inch Nails, a version of the song that has since eclipsed the original in popularity. In fact, while Burn by The Cure was considered to be the official theme song as mentioned earlier, for many fans, Dead Souls became the true theme song for the movie. This wouldn't be the first Joy Division cover considered for this particular album though. 
the band New Order was not only asked to do a cover of Joy Division's hit Love Will Tear Us Apart for the movie, but they were also originally approached to do the entire soundtrack. Bernard Sumner, the lead singer for New Order, nixed the offer entirely in favor of continuing work on their then-upcoming album, Republic. While this decision worked out mostly okay for New Order, as the song Regret from the album went on to be their highest charting single in the US ever, we can't help but wonder how different the popularity of The Crow, and 90s alt-rock in general, would have been without the soundtrack that we ended up getting. Multiple sequels of varying quality followed The Crow in the years that followed, including the second installment, The Crow City of Angels, which spawned its own original soundtrack that was almost as popular as the first. The album which accompanied the first sequel gave a shot in the arm to the careers of bands such as Hole and Filter. On top of that, the City of Angels soundtrack gave us our first real glimpse into what a Rob Zombie solo career would look like with his cover of the Casey and the Sunshine band hit, I'm Your Boogeyman. The series of Crow movies and companion soundtracks not only had a huge impact on the future of the movie industry, but also the music industry, the results of which we continue to see to this day. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching Things You Might Not Know. If you enjoyed today's video, please leave a like and a comment down below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit that bell icon so you get notified every time I post a new video. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and you can see a playlist of Things You Might Not Know videos over here. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time!